Hello and welcome to this new Quick Tech episode. My name is Philippe Oziel. I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at change data capture and platform event filtering. And we'll also take a look at change data capture event enrichment. I'm a big fan of streaming APIs. And when you build event-driven architectures with those APIs, the problem is you get a lot of noise. There's a lot of events going in and out of the platform and you generally want to focus on certain types of events. Now, the good thing is we've released a new feature called event filtering, and this is based on something called custom event channels. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can create those custom event channels. We'll use uh, the tooling API, but we can also use the metadata API and we'll use Postman as an API tool to interact with those custom uh, platform event channels. All right, we're now in Postman and I'm gonna use the Salesforce Platform APIs collection, which is a set of ready-made request templates that we can use to explore the Salesforce APIs. Now we're gonna explore the tooling API and in particular, I wanna look at change to capture custom channels. From there, we need to do two things. First, we need to start by creating a custom channel. This request here, a post to this API endpoint, will create a platform event channel. The important bit is in the body here of the request. First, we need to specify an API name for our channel. Uh, in our case, we're gonna create a custom channel that allows us to track account changes that are related to the manufacturing industry. So the manufacturing account CDC channel. Then we need to specify two bits of metadata. The first one here is the channel type. And the channel type uh, has two possible values at this point. It's either data for change data capture or it's events for platform events. Finally, there's a user-friendly name that you can use for the label. And this allows you to find out uh, what, what are your custom uh, channels. So let's create this uh, custom channel here. Uh, this was a success. And we're gonna now add members to this channel. A channel can contain one or more members and you can uh, use custom channels also to work with multiple types of entities. In our case, we're gonna add a manufacturing account member. And you can see here, uh, we're specifying an API name. The API name looks very similar to the event channel that we just created, except, except there's only one single underscore there instead of two like we had in the parent. This is extremely important because if you try to register a name, an API name with double underscore, you'll have an error. And the convention is that we generally have the name of the channel with single underscore instead of two, followed by the entity type that we're observ observing. In our case, that's gonna be an account change event. So when we go into the metadata, we have the name of the parent uh, channel, then we have the ability to specify some filter expressions. Filter expressions allow you to have comparison operators equals uh, superior, inferior, etc., and also Boolean operators that allow you to filter the uh, incoming events based on specific field values. So here, with this filter expression, industry equals manufacturing, we would look at accounts with industry set to manufacturing. And finally, there's the selected entity, which is the base event on which we're connecting. This is the account change data capture events. This one is a standard one, but you can also use custom change data capture events here as the selected entity. Now that we've seen the different fields, let's add a member to our channel. Here, this is also a success. Okay, so our custom channel is defined with its own members. We can now move on to Assessors.org and see how this works. We are now into Assessors.org that contains a list of accounts. And on the right side, you can see here, I have a tool called the Streaming Liner. This is a useful tool I built that is available on the App Exchange, and it lets you conveniently uh, listen to streaming API events from the comfort of a Salesforce. So I'm gonna use the Streaming Monitor to, to select uh, our custom channel. And here I can use the name of our custom channel. I'm gonna subscribe to it. And at this point, we're listening to change that capture event. You can see here, the custom channel is listed as a subscribe to. Now, what I'm gonna do now on the same org here, I'm gonna to try to modify an unrelated account. So I'm gonna take this account, which is not from the industry type uh, manufacturing. You see it's an agricultural, agricultural account. So I'm gonna to try to change a the field there. And normally, if everything goes well, nothing happens on the streaming monitor because we are not getting the change data capture event on, on the streaming monitor because of the filtering we've put in place for a custom channel. Now let's try to do the same thing, going back to accounts. This time, I'm gonna modify an account that is in the manufacturing industry. I'm gonna switch its rating to hot, for example. 
I should see a change coming up in the streaming monitor. And you can see here that we received the change that capture event. And this is the one that says that we have a bit of the account and we set the rating to hot. All right, so that's how change data capture and platform event filtering works. Let's now talk about change data capture enrichment. Going back to our account in our org, you'll notice that there is an external ID field somewhere in here. Now, this external ID field is being used to synchronize our Salesforce org with an external system. And the problem is that this external field is stable. It won't change in the record lifetime. So what happens is that it's not being passed to change data capture events. But fortunately for us, there's a feature called change data enrichment, which allows us to force this field to be passed in change data capture events. Now, the way this works is similar to filtering. You have to work with custom event channels. So I'm going to go in Postman. We're now in Postman again. I've already deleted the previous custom channel member, and we are going to recreate our manufacturing account channel member. This time, however, uh, we can keep the expression, but we can add this section here called enrich fields, which allows us to pass a list of fields which will be provided for enrichment. You can have one or more fields here. So I'm going to select send, and we're going to see how this impacts our change data capture events. All right, now that we are back next with the streaming monitor, I'm going to resubscribe again to the channel. And what we're going to do now is we're going to play again with one of the fields here. Again, rating, I'm not very creative here. And once I save it, we'll get new change data capture events. Let's take a look at this event. Now you'll notice that we have access to the industry field because that's part of the filter, but we also have the external ID field, which hasn't changed. So this is how we can use change data enrichment in your change data capture events. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. We saw change data capture and platform event filtering. And we also took a look at change data capture event enrichment. We saw that we can use either the metadata API or the tooling API. And we've explored some tools like Postman to create those custom event channels. I hope that you liked this episode. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get more of this awesome content. Thanks for watching again.